warm-up presented by Coles Market. I'm Mark Coons. Patrick Cameron will join us in just a little bit as tonight we are at Columbus Grove as the Bulldogs get ready for the 2014 high school football season. Joined now by the head coach of Columbus Grove, Andy Schaefer, third year now with the Bulldogs. And, and we know that the first year you got into the late start, second year you're able to start to implement things. Third year, you're, you're feeling at home now? Uh, yeah, we are. We definitely feel at home. We got the same offense, uh, the same defensive staff finally coming back and, and uh, definitely excited and ready to go. Two and eight a season ago, one and six in the NWC, not the season you were hoping for. Were there lessons learned, though, from that year? Oh, absolutely. You know, the thing that I really enjoyed about last year was the way that our kids competed in every game. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the clock ticked at the wrong spot for us. But uh, uh, but we were definitely fighting a lot of those games. We were there down by a score, up by a score, or something like that, with about three minutes ago in the fourth quarter, and we just couldn't get over the hump. And, you know, that's kind of the sign of a young team, which is what we were. Yeah, like Earl Bruce likes to say, he never lost a game, but there's several games where the time ran out on him. <laughs> that's, that's right. You mentioned it, a young team, a lot of guys coming back from that team now. Yeah, we have a, an extreme amount of kids that are coming back, and it's just neat to see because, um, you know, definitely my first year here when I was talking in practice, nobody understood anything. <laughs> uh, the second year, it was kind of that way, too, just because we were so young. And, and this year, it's it, we are so far along in, in, in camp right now. Um, you know, we got an inner squad scrimmage we're about to do, and, and, and we have a full playbook on both sides of the ball, which is nice. One guy you can build around on both sides of the ball, Joey Warnicky, running back, linebacker, was recognized all NWC last year, and he's back now. Yeah, Joey. Uh, Joey's season was cut short a little bit last year with a concussion in week eight, so um, he was actually able to kind of maybe play against Bluffton in that last game, and it would be nice to have him, obviously. But we just thought, you know, for his future, obviously, the best thing to do is just to, to hold him out. And so, uh, doing that has really enabled him to watch the game from the sidelines and I think he's learned a lot from that and we're expecting great things from Joey this year. He's just a great leader on and off the field. Certainly when you talk football, certainly last few years, concussions are a major topic. What protocols does Columbus Grove have in place for concussions? Uh, we, we actually um, uh, use a guy that actually fits helmets for West Virginia and uh, he really does a good job. And, and we actually only had one concussion last year. Unfortunately, it was one of our top <laughs> players, but, uh, but we pride ourselves in taking, taking precautions the right way. Um, you know, we, we check their mouth guards, we check their helmet. We just want to make sure that we have the best equipment. And, you know, obviously things can happen, but we want to make sure that we're doing things to avoid those problems. A couple of weeks for you strap it on for real against Pandora Gilboa. It's always a great way to start off the season. That'll be one of two Columbus Grove games you'll be able to see on WOSN as well as the Week 8 matchup against Paulding as you've got the Rockets coming into Climber Stadium in a few weeks. We're excited about Pandora game. Just as always, obviously, it's just a natural rivalry when you can, you know, throw a rock and, and hit Pandora from here. So, um, you know, it's, it's not very far away. They have a new coach, so they're going to be excited. And, and we got a lot of things that we, we need to prove to get back on track. But, you know, right now we're not even really thinking about Pandora as much as we are ourselves. We just want to make sure that we have our guys focused and doing the right thing and, and come together as a team family. What do you need to work on the most between now and that week one game? We just need to work on trust. We need to work on um, uh, just trust amongst each other on players and trust amongst the coaches. Uh, we have our system in place. Uh, there shouldn't be any questions by now, and they just got to trust what they need to do, see it, go attack, and whether it's offense and defense, and, and finish the game. What's the coaching staff like this year? Our coaching staff is, is excited. I mean, it's just neat to see uh, uh, unity amongst the staff. and. And uh, when you have the same staff over a number of years, you can just see teams get better. Um, you talk to the, the Ottawa Glandorfs, the Kentons that had runs with staff for years and years and years back in my days when I was at Liberty Benton and we had a staff that was put together for a long time. And, and that really helps with kids. And, and I've just noticed that the kids just trust the coaches. They, they, they have relationships, not just on the football field, but outside the football field as well. And that, that makes a huge difference. You know, three years now here at Grove, what are some of the ways you've built your relationships with your players? Oh, we spend a lot of time together. Um, just, you know, I, I actually live <laughs> basically right next to the school. You can see the football field from my backyard. And, you know, the guys can come over any time if they want. But, you know, if, I, all I have to do is look out the door and I see them driving by and, uh, you know, just stop and talk and that kind of stuff. But, you know, we, we, we have a very committed off-season program. So, so we spend a lot of time together. <laughs> Off season, this particular off season, the OHSA added some rules in, allowing some more coaching, allowing some more time. How did you utilize that that extra time over the of the summer? Well, you know, as a small school, you have kids competing in multiple sports, right. um, so that 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 really is hard for small schools. But we did take advantage of it mainly in the summer when baseball and track was over. Right. Um, I was not 
about to pull some kids out of baseball track or basketball and wrestling. You know, those guys need to compete in those sports. And, and we all know Columbus Grove has a pride and a history and a tradition in all sports here. So we don't want to take away from that. We want to encourage our guys to compete. 11 times Columbus Grove has made the playoffs, 2009 the last time. Is week 11 what you guys are, are aiming for this year? Absolutely. You know, we're the biggest Division 7 school in the state of Ohio, so there's really no excuse why we can't get there. We got guys coming back. We got guys excited. So that definitely is something that drives us. Northwest Conference a season ago, you had that three-way tie between Jefferson, Crestview, and Ada. We mentioned you guys one in six in the league. Do you think maybe this year you can, I don't want to say, necessarily say keep, catch some teams sleeping on you, but could you be a dark horse this year? Well, we could, but again, I'm not, um, I'm not really going to worry about the other teams. We're just going to take one game at a time and focus on ourselves. We've got Allen East as the NWC opener in week two. We mentioned you opened up against uh, Pandora Gilboa, Ada week three, and then LCC in week four as Scott Palti, former Grove head coach, is back and will be back at Climber Stadium in week four. That's always been a special rivalry over the years between Grove and LCC. It is, and uh, you know, I'm not really sure that it's the right thing to do to, to, to get rid of them on the schedule. This is our last one, but uh, just knowing that and our kids know that, that this is the last time that they'll play LCC for who knows how long. I mean, it just means something more. So, yeah, our kids will be fired up, and I'm sure Coach Paulding's going to have his kids fired up too. It means a lot for him and to have a good game, and that's what we're playing, and we're, we're playing a, a, a nice, good rivalry game. All right, thanks very much, Coach Andy Schaefer of the Columbus Grove. Bulldogs need to take a break on this Coles Market warm-up. When we come back, Patrick Cameron will sit down with some Bulldog players here in WOSA. Welcome back to the Coles Market warm-up show. Continuing talking to the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Got a couple Bulldogs with me here uh, on set. I've got Joey Warnicke and Kristen Steckschulte. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks. Uh, first, I'm going to talk with you, Joey. Uh, how's uh, practice going so far for you guys? Practice has been going well. We got a lot of guys stepping up and continuing to push each other and make each other get better and work harder. Awesome. Christian, a lot of, uh, a lot of younger guys. You guys are returning a ton of guys from uh, this past year. How is... Uh, how have the seniors been working on getting those guys kind of up to speed and helping the younger players and helping them to figure out how they're going to go this season? Uh, we've been helping out a lot. We've even got two seniors that just joined the team this year. Uh, there's only seven of us, but we've been helping out the coaches as much as we can, getting the younger guys in and getting them reps and helping them know what they're do, doing. What are some specific things that you guys have been working on? Um, we we're focusing a lot on run this year. and mainly just getting the young guys in and getting them reps with their run plays so they know what they're doing. We're making sure everyone knows knows their assignments and knows what to do, and they can get in and scout team and then push each other to get positions and make each other work better. Now, we only started talking about football here about the last week. When did this process start for you guys? When do you guys start working on football? You first, Joey. Go ahead. Oh, it's, been, it's been going on since – before school even ended, we've been working in the mornings, but now, now when we're in pads, we're in full contact. It's time to go. We're ready. A couple weeks, Pandora Gilboa is coming in. It's your first game. Christian, I'll ask you this first. What, what has you uh, most excited about week one? Uh, well, definitely the loss last year wants us to get them, helps us want to get them back a lot more. Uh, I mean, we beat them like three years in a row, I think and lost last year, kind of refi refired the rivalry a little bit, so that helps out a lot with motivation for week one. So coming off a 2-8 and eight record, you know, not the best, 1-6 and six in conference, what are you guys specifically working on between now and week one to get better? We're working on our competition. We know we're, we're finishing drives in the end zone during practice, we're pushing harder, and we're, we're making sure that we finish each drive. What has impressed you guys so far about the, the team? Is just in the few weeks you guys have been at it, what has stuck out to you guys? What has impressed you about either what you guys have been doing or what your teammates have been doing? I would say our camaraderie. You know, we're, we, all, we all get along. We're all friends with each other. You know, we get along, we get along real well, so that's going to help us out on the football field. Christian? I'd say the uh, new guys stepping up. I'm, we had three upperclassmen just join the team for their first year this year, and they're stepping up and fitting right in with the system, and the younger kids too. We've got a bunch of freshmen trying to get reps with the older guys and getting better. 
All right, thanks a lot, Joe Warnke, Christian Stecksholte, for sitting down with us. When we come back on the Coles Market Warm Up Show, we'll have some more Bulldogs right here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Warm Up Show, sponsored by Coles Market. A couple more Bulldogs have joined me here on the field. We've got David Bogart and Tanner Frum. Guys, thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you. Only uh, seven seniors on the team, as uh, we learned. Uh, I'll ask uh, David this first. What is it like on the team when there are really not a lot of seniors? You're used to a few more on a team traditionally. When it's only seven of you guys, how does that affect you guys from a leadership perspective and getting the underclassmen ready to go? Well, it's not too bad because we got a lot of returning players, so we got a lot of guys know what they're doing. Like, so we had a lot of varsity players coming back, so not the leadership part isn't too hard because we got a lot of like the senior class this year is like a lot of leaders. We don't have many followers; we're just a bunch of all-around guys, the leaders for the team. Tanner, what uh, are you most excited about heading into the football season? Well, we have a lot bigger numbers this year compared to last year for the team, and I really help. I mean, I really think that's going to help out our team with helping each other get better on practice and game nights too. And what have you guys? I'll go back to you. What have you been working on the most here since you've been in camp? Well, we've been working on a lot of tackling. Tackling was a big deal for us last year, so we've just been repping them tackling drills out in defense practice, and then offensively, we've been working on our route running and our running plays. So it helps a lot for the season and stuff. What do you feel like you guys are getting, working on the most, getting ready for week one here against uh, Pandora Gilboa? Well, we've really been working like both ways. That way we're really well-rounded teams. So that way we don't have many weaknesses when it comes to get, uh, week one against Pandora. So we are ready to go. Does it amp up the preparation just a little bit to know you guys came off a 2-8 and eight season and as seniors you know that you don't want to repeat that as much as you possibly can does that oh, yeah. up, up a little bit oh yeah the two and eight season was real tough for me yeah I love football and I do everything I can for it so I do my best and last thing I want to do is have another two and eight season and on my mind is week 11 that's all I want week 11 along with week 11 because you guys want to get back to the playoffs uh, it's been a while 2009 last time Columbus Grove was there are there any other games you guys have kind of circled on your calendar that you're like oh I really want to get up for that one although we know you're up for all of them but are there any ones you've especially kind of circled on your calendar? Tanner, what do you think? Well, I really feel like we, as a senior group, want to play LCC real bad because our ex-coach just went there and we want to have a shot at him again. Well, I'm uh, focused on Pandora right now. Just Pandora, everything, you know. That's first game, and let's start from there, and let's get the season started for Pandora. All right. Guys, good luck in the season. David Bogart and Tanner Frum, a couple seniors on the Bulldogs. That's going to wrap it up for the Coles Market warm-up show. For Mark Koontz, I'm Patrick Kamler. We'll see you next time.